Uh, today we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, which of course is the birthday of the church. Um, before I do the readings and the sermon today, just a few notices. Uh, firstly, thank you to all those who have subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, for your interest, we have uh, 250 subscribers at the moment, so that's very good. 250 people subscribed to the St Anne's YouTube channel. And there have been almost approximately 5,000 views of all the various masses and so on. So that's very pleasing that people are uh, able to uh, pray the Mass each day um, and uh, be able to um, pray the Mass and to listen to the various sermons. Uh, news on St Anne's, of course. Uh, in the WA, West Australia, the government have changed in the restrictions. So beginning next Saturday, the 6th of June, Ember Saturday of Pentecost, the new regulations allow uh, 100 to be in an indoor space. Uh, however, because of the size of St Anne's, um, there's, uh, we'll be having slightly less than that number. But to allow everyone to be able to attend Holy Mass on Trinity Sunday in a week's time, there'll be seven Masses at St Anne's. So there'll be 7 a.m., 8.30 a.m., uh, 10 a.m. Sung Mass, 11.30 a.m., uh, 2 p.m., 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Masses. So we'll see how that goes and uh, seven of being the perfect number for June the 7th. So there'll be seven Masses on the 7th. So uh, if you haven't already done so, please make sure you book in for Mass if you're coming to Mass because we have to um, space the people out attending Mass uh, because of the limitations of numbers. So uh, please contact me and please read the uh, details in the bulletin emailed out. If you haven't already got the bulletin, please subscribe to receive the bulletin and Sunday sermon, which still be, will be emailed out with the notices each week. I remind you that the Sunday sermon that I give here on YouTube is different to the Sunday sermon emailed out each week. And also, uh, because of the number of masses on Sunday and the timing, uh, sermons and notices will not be given out at the Sunday masses. It'll just be a uh, mass for you to attend. And um, please still watch the YouTube channel uh, sermon and, of course, uh, listen to the notices and as well uh, read the sermon emailed out each week. So further details about all of this uh, is in the bulletin, so please read that. Uh, the epistle today is taken from the epistle of the Acts of the Apostles. When the days of the Pentecost were accomplished, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty wind coming, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues as it were of fire, and it sat down every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with diverse tongues, according to the Holy Ghost gave them to speak. Now there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded in mind, because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue. And they were all amazed and wondered, saying, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? And how we have heard every man our tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene and strangers of Rome. Jews also and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We have heard them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, 
If anyone loved me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and will make our abode with him. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my words. And the word which you have heard is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. And these things I have spoken to you, abiding with you. But the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth do I give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, nor let it be afraid. You have heard that I said to you, I go away and I come unto you. If you love me, you would indeed be glad, because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it had come to pass, that when it shall come to pass, you may believe. I will now speak many things with you, for the prince of the world cometh, and in me he have not anything. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father hath given me commandment, so do I. About 170 years ago, an orange boat was leaving the shores of Italy. And on that boat was one of the most brilliant minds of the time, John Henry Newman. He was returning to his native England after a visit in Rome. Though he was not a Catholic at the time, Newman was deeply interested in the church and in truth. He was at this time dissatisfied with his Church of England Anglican faith. Wide reading and deep study were pointing to the one true church which had its headquarters in the eternal city of Rome. And that is one of the reasons why he had gone to Rome, to study the Catholic faith firsthand at its very centre. Now, because he was in an uncertain state of mind, the following incident meant much to him. His ship suddenly ran into a calm ocean, calm with no wind. The dread of sailors in the days when ships were run by sail. Not a breath was stirring. The sea was as smooth as glass. They were unable to move and they drifted this way for over a week, marooned in the midst of the sea. In those dismal days, Newman wrote on the ship his immortal poem, Lead kindly light, lead kindly light, amid the encircling doom, lead me on. The night is dark and I am far from home, lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet, I do not ask to see, the distant scene, one step enough for me. Now there is more to this poem, of course, but it does illustrate how Newman was grasping for the light. Meanwhile, back in the orange boat one day, Newman noticed the curtains on his cabin window billowing with a bit of breeze. He rushed to the deck and shouted, wake up, wake up, the calm is over. There is a breeze, look. And the sailors were beside themselves with joy and shouted, wind at last. And in no time, the sails were hoisted and the ship pulled out of the calm on its way back to England. Now, in a similar way, the Holy Ghost came down upon the apostles on that very first Pentecost, the birthday of the church. As we hear, suddenly, as with the sound of a mighty wind, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in different tongues, or rather speak in such a way that those of different tongues understood them. This indeed is the true gift of tongues, being understood by many people. 
Now, like Newman and the sailors, our Blessed Mother and the disciples gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem, praying for the gift of the Holy Ghost. They too were praying, lead kindly on thy light. They were begging God, the God of light and love, the third person of the Blessed Trinity to come and calm their fears. The Holy Ghost to give them the fire and the love and the light they needed to go forth and preach the Holy Gospel to the whole world. Now, the little boat on which Cardinal Newman to be and his companions found themselves stranded in the sea was no worse off than the bark of Peter before the first Pentecost. Newman prayed for light and help out of the uncertainties and doubts of his present Anglican Church of England faith. The bright browning breeze of the Holy Ghost came into his heart and he became a Catholic. That same spirit came to the infant church and drove it and spurred it on in an apostolic way, as we read, that so many understood and were converted by what St Peter said, 3,000 became Catholic that day. This Pentecost, of course, of 2020, the same breath of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is blowing the bark of Peter along its way on those who follow her teaching. Of course, Cardinal Newman was beatified on 19th of September 2010 by Pope Benedict in England, the land of his birth. Like Newman and his companions on the boat, like Mary and the apostles in the upper room, we are living in days that certainly are dark, when the forces of good seem helpless and overwhelmed, unable to move in an aggressive world, a sea of indifference and apathy towards the Holy Catholic faith. And if this is true of society in general, it is also true of many an individual soul. Error, uncertainties and sin deaden and darken the soul. Think of this sort of eight weeks where churches have been closed. Eight weeks of churches being closed have led to many a darkening of the soul. And at such times, the soul should cry out with Newman, lead kindly light. To us this Pentecost, as to them at the first Pentecost then, there comes the breath of God like a mighty wind to blow away the clouds of doubt, to fill the sails of our souls with the moving, thrilling breeze of the Spirit. Today we should be uplifted, encouraged and spurred on by the Holy Ghost. And as we know, some people uh, know, know, uh, know the true path. Some people do not know the true path. Sometimes, even knowing it, they have not had the courage to follow the true path. As we know, every day brings its problems, not only in religion, but in every phase of our lives. Problems that seem to have no solution, problems unsolved for centuries, perhaps, like problems of peace in the world, the problems of unjust economics, unsolved problems that remain if we do not beg the light of the Holy Ghost. In the midst of all this talk of coronaviruses, what the world should be doing is praying for the light of the Holy Ghost. For that is the only thing that can show the way, the truth and the light. And this is particularly true regarding peace. As we know, men from every nation understood the apostles on that first Pentecost as if they were speaking in their own language. That was a miracle worked by the Holy Ghost. And we can hope and trust in the Holy Ghost that he will help all nations and ourselves with this great grace 
and this great understanding, one of the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. And as we know, just as fire banishes darkness and gives light, so too the Holy Ghost enlightens us so that we may know what is good and pleasing to Almighty God. As fire frees iron and other metals from slag and makes them bright, so too the Holy Ghost cleanses us from the stains of sin and makes us the glorious image of Almighty God. And as fire warms whatever comes near the fire, so too the Holy Ghost warms the hearts of men by his love, his charity, that they may obtain the strength to overcome every obstacle to salvation and to practice every virtue. So let us beg on this great feast of Pentecost, let us beg the Holy Ghost to help the world with its many great problems and our own problems and beg the Holy Ghost to help us solve our own personal problems. We all have our own difficulties, our own problems. Let us implore the Holy Ghost to help us. And may each one of us and the whole world cry out in the words of blessed Cardinal Newman, lead kindly light. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.